the network. Oh, what's up, Brand Man Network? It's Sean, and I'm back with another Brand Man Network exclusive. This concept is extremely simple, but it's true. Consistency. I know a lot of people hear, oh, be consistent, be consistent, be consistent. It just sounds like BS or just sounds like this cop-out message and advice, but I'm talking about it for a specific reason. Consistency is how you own things. There's multiple ways to own things, but this video is more about ownership. The way that you cannot lose out on something that you do in your brand is make sure you own it. So what about if you do a freestyle series? I can use Coda the Friend for an example because I know some people might have seen that video I did on Coda the Friend and then somebody like Stromai who did a series on his beat making. If you do something in a unique way, a lot of times people lose out and they miss out when they only do it once because you do this thing and it's really cool and now someone else might take it later and get more attention with it and then it's like, oh uh, yeah, they might have been inspired by, by you but you know they did it on a bigger scale or they did it better but once you do it multiple times, if you do 20 videos, 10 videos, a very specific series around your unique concept, and once again, we could flash a screenshot of Coded a Friend's concept with his you know, still video with the text on it, and then somebody like Stromai with his beat making series and how he was interesting in, in all these random places, once you do that, you own it, you made it yours. And that's where people lose out with brands a lot of times. You have these things that you're doing that are creative or cool, but you don't own it by either doing it repetitively or making a whole concept around it. So here's another version of it. Issa, 21 Savage, he did the interview and he said it's a knife and then all of a sudden it became this whole internet meme where everybody's saying it's a this, it's a that, it's a that, they're, they're, they're laughing at it and that's cool but 21 Savage didn't really do anything to own it at that time because it wasn't really expected and he wasn't really joking when he said it, he was just being him. Only thing he did to own it was eventually create an album called Issa, and that made it his. So if you look at the fact that he didn't do much, really, outside of just an interview where it blew up and he wasn't even realizing that this was gonna happen, and then making an album, and you know, a few like marketing activations around it, those are the only things that he did and he owned the concept. Now when people think about 21 Savage, they give him credit because he started it and he ended it. And of course he's not using that as a part of his brand anymore. But that's what ownership looks like. There's certain concepts and if you create an album around it or something big and specific that's truly driven by that concept, whatever that concept is, and you make people know, you put a name to it, just like Bryson Tiller did Trap Soul. Some people said, oh, The Weeknd started that sound, but Bryson Tiller put a name to it and he made an album with that same name, right? Those types of things give you ownership over it. So when you are doing a lot of stuff, make sure you take advantage of some of them by making sure you own it. You have to either name it and then market the fact that you named it or you just have to do it consistently so now people can just look at the catalog and say, oh, he was doing this. He didn't just do something and he kind of alluded to it and touched on it. No, he was literally aware of this and created a concept that he did it consistently. That's the difference between why some people get credit for things and why some people don't. And once again, you're an artist, you're a producer, you're creative, so you might not necessarily actually own every single thing you do creatively because you're putting so much stuff out there. But at the end of the day, you have to pick and choose and figure out some things that you do want to double down on and make sure you own. Because look at an artist like Kanye West. He's done so many different sounds and things that he's experimented on. Obviously, he has plenty of things that he owned, but there's other artists who created entire careers off of just taking one thing that Kanye West did and now they just own it. Like Drake owned the whole singing rapper thing, right? There's other artists who sang first and even Nelly, you know, and Ja Rule, if you want to go back that far, they were singing as they rap, but they didn't necessarily want to own it too heavily as singing and make a cool thing out of it. Then you had someone like Kanye West playing with it, obviously T-Pain, you had all those people, but then Drake came in and said, this is my thing, this is what I do, and created an entire brand around that. Travis Scott took that sound that Kanye West was playing with, arguably, you know, he was helping Kanye anyway, so Kanye might've took it from him, but he owned that specific style of using auto-tune. 
There's always different versions of that in the artist creation tree, right? You'll see people who invent certain things and they're putting out so much production, but then you'll see people who take those little things and then they'll own it and they'll just focus down on improving that one little thing as opposed to putting out a lot of other things. And then somebody else will take something from that artist that they did. Like it's the constant evolution of the tree. You just have to make sure you own something. That's it.